Um, so this is a session based on a project that Diana and I created when we were both in um, education fellowships. I was an emergency medicine fellow uh, studying research education, and Diana had just finished her internal medicine residency and was doing an education year before she went off to become an infectious disease doctor. Uh, and she's kind of busy in clinic right now. Uh, the goal here is we're just going to talk about learning theory because as an education researcher i'm obsessed with it uh, and how we tried to use learning theory to develop a serious game this is something that diana actually had a lot of experience with before and thankfully she was able to kind of guide me and make the game workable so this came about because i was asked to lead a session for uh, faculty at the university of washington for one of our community sites uh, where they wanted a, a specifically a session on active learning. And to some extent, that seems like an oxymoron to me to have a, a didactic session on active learning. And so uh, I'm usually I'm loath to use slides unless it's appropriate and I can do it quickly. Uh, and so I tried to figure out a way and started by developing this game. And so at the time I was doing a, a teaching scholars program and we just covered active learning and so i thought there's a lot of ways that we could use this to support gameplay and so there's a lot of sub theories in active learning theory uh, and i would argue that they're basically all just interactive uh, and kind of connect to each other and so we wanted to try using motivational learning which would suggest that learners uh, should be engaged and that they need to buy into what they're doing and self-directed learning might say that they need the freedom to set and monitor their own goals to learn most effectively. Transformational theory said that their learners should recognize a dilemma for themselves, something where they can trigger uh, to seek or develop new knowledge, and that would inspire them to reflect upon that learning. And then social learning theory would suggest that the learning context includes other participants and that learning might be improved when learners learn together. All right, Diana, can we hear you? All right, can you hear me? Yes. Great, all right. So our answer to the ask is that participants will play a serious game using real teaching scenarios, judge active learning techniques by utility to them, to, to you, the clinical teachers. Next slide. So the serious game we have created is called Clinical Coaching Cards, which is a teaching to teach game geared toward faculty and others who teach in a clinical setting to help teachers learn and apply new clinical teaching techniques that are based in active learning theories. Meanwhile, the game mechanics themselves maximize discussion and engagement and agree with Dr. Wastrold that, you know, the fact that we are giving a didactic rather than actually playing the game is a little bit ironic, unfortunately. Um, for those who are familiar, the gameplay is similar to apples to apples in which one player acts as a judge for each round, posing a scenario or question. Each of the players selects an action card from their hand and the judge chooses their favorite or best card. Next slide. So in clinical coaching cards, a single round consists of a player acting as a teacher, describing a real world teaching scenario that they find challenging or would like assistance in. Each player acts as a consultant to help the teacher. Each player has a hand filled with teaching techniques that describes an actual active learning clinical teaching technique, how to apply that technique in clinical teaching, and the learning theories behind it. Each consultant player will play one card that they feel best addresses the proposed teaching scenario and describes how to utilize the teaching technique for that specific scenario. This tends to foster discussion amongst the players and the teacher will ultimately choose their favorite of the suggested techniques. So the gameplay is therefore cooperative where the overall goal is to help the teacher find the best teaching technique for the proposed scenario, but maintains a bit of a competitive edge and the game mechanics themselves are intuitive and conducive to social interaction, discussion and active learning. Also involves a bit of role play. And so the game is actually pretty meta in that it uses active learning techniques to teach active learning techniques. And so showing is a little bit better than saying in this case. So um, for the next slide, we have a video of a sample round of the game. Apologize to uh, Glaucom Flecken for ripping his style. I think that I don't hear the sound from this video. I Yeah, I was just going to oh, say no. I can't hear either. Sometimes yeah, it me. has to do with the share screen settings on Zoom. Yeah. Let me, boom. I had it pre-queued. Try it again. See medicine attending an academic institution. Most of my learners are only in the ED for one shift or shadowing second year students without a lot of clinical experience. I don't get the chance to know them longitudinally. 
The ED can be a chaotic environment and there's limited time to see and staff patients. What can I do to quickly assess students' level of understanding and ensure I drive home important teaching points for each patient? Hello from vacation as an EM doctor on vacation like an EM doctor does. I will suggest the muddiest point technique. It consists of asking a student to identify an area that they found the muddiest or most confusing part of a patient encounter so that the preceptor can immediately hone in and clarify. This ensures that there is quick and direct teaching for the encounter. The theory is that it allows the learner to reflect and use metacognition where the learner thinks about their own thinking and in doing so is able to self-direct their learning. Oh, interesting. I really like that idea. I'm also an EM doctor who biked here just now. I would use the eyeballing technique. You can use it with a trainee before they assess a patient or a shadowing student before and after you see someone. From the door, ask the learner to commit to an assessment of, is this patient sick or not sick? Have them explain what they see, such as vitals, tubes, lines, blood, you name it. Then after you assess the patient, have them reflect on their initial impression and what may have changed. You can help the student refine their assessment, practice metacognition and provide feedback. Oh, interesting. I really like that idea. Both of those are really great ideas. I think the best technique for my situation is the eyeballing technique, because even with a lot of experience, I want learners to start thinking sick or not sick. I'll probably save muddiest point for some of my more experienced learners to unstick a tough decision. Ah, oh, bummer. <laughs> I'm an emergency medicine attending and an academic and donate that again. Um, so we had 14 techniques and a lot of them were actually previously published in the literature. Um, but through the course of developing this game, we learned that that also means that they're copyrighted by the um, profit making journals that published them. Uh, this one is from actually a handful of probably familiar researchers at your institution uh, and is a paper that they did called eyeballing. And it's based on the idea that there's a pretty good uh, interclass correlation between emergency physicians with a very brief amount of uh, time to assess patients and deciding if someone's going to be admitted or discharged or essentially are they sick or not sick. And yet this is easy fodder to develop a technique. It's something that I want learners to be able to learn and we can practice with a very limited amount of time. And so this is one of the techniques that we created uh, de novo for the game. Uh, and there's 14 total and a wild card in our deck that we would play with. So we ran a handful of sessions and had collected about 74 um, evaluations of that. Um, most of this was clinical faculty, including uh, residents, and we had some med students in there. We had a handful of people from administrative staff, and I'm going to claim that they were the handful of people that gave us lower evaluations for relevance. Uh, the interesting thing is that of the 14 techniques, some were certainly much more popular. Uh, I think the muddiest point was probably the most popular one. Uh, 35 people said it would be one of the ones they wanted to take into their own teaching. But even the most kind of idiosyncratic techniques still had six people say, you know, I really think that would be the best thing for me. And so I say this is a strength of the technique and that group by group, you might find someone who really learned or figured out a good way to sell a technique and showed its strength to a group of people. Uh, and so in the way that game, you know, we didn't have to teach the techniques, we didn't really have to explain them in most cases, people figured out within the game, how should they work, and who would they really work for and we were able to select that for themselves. All right, so some a few take home points and food for thought about gamification and serious games in medical education. Games and play are easily compatible with active learning theories. Educational games connect game behaviors to learning objectives, and this is really fitting because a lot of games tend to be objective based. With the caveat that games aren't inherently educational, but facets of games can increase educational effectiveness when they're tying in active learning theory, for example, as we hope that we have demonstrated here. Thank you so much. If you'll look in the chat, we put in a little link tree with some links to the MedEd Portal publication, a print and place that's a free download of the game if you can print it yourself, um, the video of our sample hand and our Twitter handles. Thank you. That's really lovely. Thank you so much for that. I had so much fun watching that video. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it one of those PowerPoint record uh, features or is it a Zoom record feature? 
It was Zoom record with the PowerPoint uh, background. Ah, yeah. the, the so we had Zoom the within Zoom to teach a game within a game or active learning nice. within a game. <laughs> oh, my mind is exploded. <laughs> well done, guys. Thank you. How many times have you run this workshop? Six or seven, I think, maybe a oh, couple more. Wow. Yeah. And we handed out a lot of, you know, free copies because we would update it between every session. Mm. So print it, play it, enjoy it. This is awesome. Thank you for the link. Thank you. So I guess we have a, a five minute break instead of 15, but uh, that is just because we had a good time listening to each other. So thank you very much for all the presenters. Uh, we'll see some of you back at two o'clock.